Hi everyone, so today I'm going to be talking to you about Mary Parker Follett, um, who is known for her work in education, creative experience, new democracy, and management, and is has kind of been a forgotten name, but has really paved the way um, for people working in management and um, could really teach people who are going into that position um, a way to kind of navigate how to do that. So just a little bit of background about her. She was born in 1868 in Quincy, Massachusetts. She attended college at the Society for the Collegiate Instruction of Women in Cambridge, Massachusetts and studied economics, government, law, and philosophy. So after college, before she um, really became um, involved in her management work, she became involved in social work in the Roxbury neighborhood in Boston, um, which is a very diverse neighborhood. and. After working here, she um, recognized the lack of development in this neighborhood, but also thought that the diversity of this neighborhood could lead to its success. So a few years later, she started working to establish community centers in neighborhoods um, like this and in public schools, and um, really thought that the mutual understanding of these diverse groups could um, lead um, to integration in groups beyond um, these community centers like churches or volunteer groups. Um, so now I'm going to focus on the work she's most known for today, which is management and how conflicts can be used um, to produce innovative solutions rather than be looked at as a bad thing. In her work, she looked at managers and how workers um, and how power could be used for participatory participatory decision-making rather than coercive power. So she looked at the idea of power over and power with, and power over is the power that is established naturally by things that like positions or titles. So what you would think a manager would have is their power. And power with involves assigning tasks and delegating administrative matters among involved parties. So just kind of splitting up work among um, group members. So she said power with, is a method that leads to um, positive outcomes and really better um, solutions and innovations through group work. So she um, identified um, three different styles of leadership. There's positional leadership, personality leadership, and functional leadership. Positional leadership is kind of um, the classic idea of a leader, is just the position or person in the position of power um, and it kind of has an authoritarian attitude. Um, personality leadership is um, what we all know as someone who is a born leader. Um, so this is someone who just um, is a leader because people um, recognize their personality as being a leader and kind of just let them be that because that's who they are. And then functional leadership is a modern form of leadership. So this involves different people taking the lead in different situations based on qualifications and knowledge. Um, so people basically taking on roles because they have um, that knowledge to do that. So Mary explains that a leader is not always a CEO or a manager of a department head, but is someone who keeps an eye on the big picture, um, facilitates transitions to new situations, and how to adjust to those situations. She also um, said that a leader is someone who energizes the group and can coordinate, define objectives, and anticipate things. Um, so as a leader, Mary Follett said that in giving orders, having a conscious attitude, having a responsible attitude, having an experimental attitude, and to follow up on results is crucial um, to what a leader should possess. So what Mary Follett is best known for is her work on the topic of management. Um, through this work, she focused on conflict and tried to prove that conflict is not harmful and use useless. Rather, um, conflict arises because people in groups have different social norms and different opinions. So, but this is not inherently bad. Um, she says it's unavoidable, so groups should try to benefit from that conflict. So in her research, um, she described three ways conflict can be resolved, and that's through dominance, compromise, and integration. So in dominance, this is um, basically one party um, beating another party. So through this conflict, it's resolved, but it doesn't really help in the long term. It kind of is just for that one situation. So this makes people feel uncomfortable and it doesn't really allow for compromise 
and um, it really doesn't lead to the two parties kind of coming together. They both really still hold their viewpoints and the conflict could easily arise again. Compromise is a method that involves both parties um, giving it a little bit so that the conflict um, can kind of be resolved. And this method is hard because people are really not willing to always compromise. We know that from experience just working in groups and just even with family members and friends. Um, and it really just didn't, this always usually involves people giving up on something they believe in, which is not easy for anyone. Um, but she said integration is um, the method that really should be used to resolve conflict. So this method results in something new being created from a different from the different parties' interests, everyone who's involved, looking at their differences and opinions. And um, this involves discussing the parties' differences, discussing each party's interests and demands, and anticipating conflicts. So moving forward, um, people should try to um, use the method of integration to resolve conflict, and this just involves addressing the differing opinions among group members, um, and kind of working through everything together to um, anticipate conflicts that could arise, but kind of working to use those conflicts to your um, advantage. And also, um, we should really just focus as a leader to have conscious attitudes, responsible attitudes, experimental attitudes, and following up on results so that um, you can uh, become better leaders in the future and lead your group to have um, better success.